Samsung's S24 lineup was announced like last week, maybe a week and some few days. And I've had this phone since it was announced. I've been using it uh, here over the last week again and some change. And I wanted to give you my early review on the Samsung Galaxy S24 Ultra one week later. So let's start off with the build quality. There's usually not a lot that I wanna focus on with build, but Samsung did make a couple of changes that I think are awesome and a lot of other phones definitely need to adopt this. So uh, entirely flat display, huge, huge, huge plus for me. Uh, this is something that I feel like every phone manufacturer needs to do. Just make the phone's display flat. I think it makes it so much better to hold in the hand and just feels and looks better in my opinion. But the other biggest change, and this is something that I haven't seen a lot of phones uh, have in the last few uh, releases, is that there's an anti-reflective display, which is awesome. There's so much less glare compared to other displays that I just really, really like the look of that. And it makes it just a much better experience, especially when you're outdoors and you're getting a lot of reflections uh, from wherever you might be. And so something super cool that Samsung added to the S24 Ultra this year. Also, the display is always super bright, super vibrant, just a really top-notch display. That carries over. There's nothing there that I would say Samsung needs to change. It's a fantastic premium display. Now, one other major change to the build is that there's titanium now. You can say what you want about the iPhone getting titanium and then Samsung immediately having titanium uh, implemented into its phones, but I'm not gonna hate on it. It feels great. I absolutely love it. The S24 Ultra is getting a little bit too big for me, honestly. Uh, it's kind of chunky and awkward at times, but I kind of always like naturally gravitate towards those larger phones. And so I, I can't really complain. I'm gonna get that phone uh, almost 10 out of 10 times. So it's just really chunky. And if you're somebody who's like kind of teetering between an S24 Plus maybe and an S24 Ultra, you might not like the huge size, so I recommend trying it out. Still an ultrasonic fingerprint reader. Uh, it's very, very good. There's no issues. Uh, Samsung's kind of got this down, but I do wish there was a good like face ID competitor. And honestly, it's not just Samsung. Like there are no other good face unlocks out there that you can use to authenticate passwords and purchases aside from face ID in an iPhone. I kind of can't believe there's not anything else out there that can do this reliably, but having both options with a really good, you know, ultrasonic fingerprint sensor and a good face ID competitor would be amazing. And so, yeah, I don't know about you. Let me know in the comments what you think, but I just think that'd be a cool tandem to have. Uh, there is a Snapdragon 8 Gen 3 chip. Not much to report on that. It's super fast top-notch performance, uh, no performance issues. I'd be really surprised if there were major performance issues with a high-end flagship these days. Uh, I don't game a whole lot, but when I do, it works flawlessly. It does get a little bit warm at times, uh, especially with this titanium. I feel like it's a little bit warmer than some of the other materials used out there in previous phones, but overall, it's great for all of the things that you'll do with your phone, and I doubt you'll have any issues. Now, some of the biggest new changes for the S24 lineup this year, specifically looking at the Ultra, comes with a lot of these new AI software features. And I'm a huge fan of some of the ones that were implemented. So Circle to Search is probably one of the more useful features. And again, this isn't actually limited to the S24 lineup. It can be found on Pixel 8 and 8 Pro devices as this is something that Samsung and Google have worked on together. So if you're in the Photos app, you just long press on the home button and then circle the part of the image that you wanna look up. But this doesn't need to be in just the Photos app. It can be in any app, anywhere, any image that you see, you can do this. And I've been seeing so like ads for Stitch Fix, which is one of those like clothing services where they get closer. And I don't wanna sign up for the service, but maybe I kinda wanna get like what I see in the photos. Go ahead and long press on that, circle the search, and you might be able to figure out what brand is being used in those images, and then you can kind of piece your own outfits together if you want to. And that's just like one specific use case. Maybe you're in uh, Instagram and you see uh, an image here of a really cool pool party, you wanna know where that location is. You can long press and see the specific club pop up. It's just a really cool way to basically Google search images, which is awesome. Chat Assist is kind of baked in throughout as well. You can translate text into other language, uh, enhance your writing style, and even fix spelling or grammatical errors by simply selecting text and then choosing the option uh, by tapping that AI button there. You can have different writing styles, make your text more professional or more informal, emojified, whatever you wanna do. Uh, this is definitely more handy for like emails, but it's pretty cool to have all of this at your fingertips just without having to go into separate apps. 
You can also take these features into notes and have AI summarize your content for you. It's just a really useful way to digest some of that content quickly. And also in like voice recordings and voice memos, you can uh, get live transcriptions going, have different speakers be kind of identified and separated. That's always super useful. And have all of that translated into different languages is really awesome as well. Now there are some other useful AI features for the camera, but before we get into all of that, here are some of the photos and videos uh, that I've taken over the last week or so with the S24 Ultra. And so I uh, just wanna let you know that I have been enjoying the camera so far. I know there has been some confusion going around about whether an update was coming to fix some of the reported camera issues, which honestly I haven't really experienced all too often. There have been a couple of issues where I kind of noticed I've taken a bad photo and kind of expect like processing to kick in and it doesn't. Uh, maybe that's what some of the issues were, but I really haven't seen anything in terms of quality issues. But we have been told by Samsung PR, I've officially reached out to my rep and asked, and they said that this is the latest version of the software. There is no software update coming this week. Uh, and so when the devices ship out to everyone on January 31st in the next few days here, this will be the same software that I have been running since I have received my unit. Of course, I'd love to hear from you in the comments down below. What are your thoughts on these images? Uh, go ahead and let me know. I would love to hear what you think about the latest camera on the S24 Ultra. Now, when it comes to the camera and AI, you have the ability to enhance some photos that might be a bit blurry. So if you're using the 10X camera and things are grainy, AI will automatically enhance that image for you immediately immediately after you take the picture, which is a really cool feature. I've never seen uh, that happen before. And also a really cool feature that I love is the ability to turn any video into a slow motion video after recording. No matter what frame rate you're recording in originally, you can take any video also. Just, it doesn't even have to be the one that you took on the S24 Ultra. You can use the AI processing power on the S24 Ultra to make any video into a slow motion video, which is really, really cool. Uh, lastly, in photos, you can use generative AI to fill in parts of your photo when editing. So for this example, we have a person skateboarding, and if I wanted to make the appearance that that person got more air, maybe move them up a bit in the photo and straighten it out and get the ground a little straight, you know, you can do all of that with generative uh, edit and have AI fill in the spots uh, that we don't have, and it does a really good job. It's like having generative fill in Photoshop on your phone, uh, and you can do this with any photo. Now, perhaps one of the more useful photo editing tools is being able to remove reflections and glares in a photo. I can't tell you how many times I've like got a good view out of my hotel room, and I'll take a picture, uh, you know, and see myself in the reflection of the window and kind of ruin the photo. So you can go ahead and remove yourself from those window reflections and uh, you know be able to have a better photo, which is really really cool. So yeah, that's that's it for now. I'll have a full review at some point in the next month or two. But right now, I'm really digging the S24 Ultra. It's definitely one of, if not the best, Android phones that you can get right now. Obviously, it's a very high-end flagship. It does have that steep starting price of $12.99, but the good thing is there are lots of credits and trade-in deals and pre-order deals, so check the link in the description down below. Definitely pre-order if you are considering this phone. Honestly, you're gonna save yourself a lot of money and maybe get yourself some cool freebies and credits and things that you couldn't get if you wait until after the 31st. So click the link in the description. There are tons of deals out there. Uh, yeah, but would love to hear from you in the comments down below. And I hope you guys subscribe to the channel so you can see more videos from me in the future. And I'll catch everybody in the next video.